Don't mess up. And we're live, everybody. Welcome to the RC Cruise Hangout. Wait, we are live. <laughs> we are live. I hit the you button. Hit the dang no button. <laughs> well, the goal was to lead us in. The goal was to lead us in with some music, and I did just that. <laughs> Uh, this is nice, huh? What? What? Uh, is that new? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Had to do it. What a sweetheart. Is that like airplanes? You get a new guitar like every week or two? Well, it's a, I've realized it's a, it's a state of mind situation. Now, look at this. See the headstock on this thing? You know what they call that? Uh, a Pearl of toilet. Pearl of toilet seat is what uh, we affectionately call it in the guitar world. It's a plastic fake pearl. but it's Oh, so it looks like pearl. Yeah, that's and then, fancy uh, and then just since uh you're rc people and you care about things this in was invented before the electric guitar like minutes before the electric guitar basically ruined this guitar so the goal is that this would be so loud that it could get up in a band and be heard there's a, a cone of aluminum under here that mm -hmm. spun out of aluminum like a speaker and the speak and the wires or the strings are sitting on this biscuit that lays on that cone and makes the The cut the uh, resonator sound. Okay, that's it. For that. Nice. Hey, Mac Gun must be in the bathroom, or his wife Ooh. muscle, or who knows. He's working uh, hard in there. He forgot it was Thursday. I reckon. <laughs> I got a don't we'll pop in. Well, you had a busy, busy weekend, didn't you, buddy? I did. In fact, there's a, a lot of RC discussion. I was going to start making notes a week ago. Uh oh, we got a little chime in here. <laughs> ah, one sec. I was upstairs. Oh, You're, I read your post out loud. Yeah. If you watch so, this uh, guy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I was at Nashville all week long, and for flying purposes, it was perfect weather. There was no wind. Skies were blue. Um, the only time it rained is when Jason and another friend of mine called me almost at the exact same moment. And then it, w it went from sunny to a thunderstorm <laughs> in a matter of seconds. And everything I had, T-shirts, uh, registration stickers, airplanes, uh, FPV airplanes with a lot of luck. It's just, I'm like, I got to go, Jason. And I don't know if I told you it was raining. You did. And I looked outside and I was like, it's no clouds in the sky in my side of town. It was crazy. And then after I got off the phone, moved everything under the tents, lowered the tents, it was like, oh, I'm not raining. I'm I'm, done. It's, yeah, it never rained again after that. <laughs> I was pretty, anyway. So uh, we had some good times under the under the uh, the uh, the field at Nash Pro, and I flew some stuff, and we're going to talk about it. I also had some revelations that's going to evolve the way I fly uh, based on experiences I had in the pasture. I've got to say, and, every year I go to this. I didn't get to go last year, but every year I've been, I'm I'm still surprised and amazed at the amount of people flying profile 3D planes. Well, okay. So let's talk about that. We had a couple of problems. Uh, hey, Matt Gunn's here. What's up? Matt, Matt, did you get that handled? Were you upstairs reading the AMA magazine? <laughs> Got a number yeah. one or two dilemma. Oh, no, it was neither. Uh, I was just actually eating a late lunch. I was sitting there making my sandwich, and I'm like, mm, this is a good sandwich. And then I hear this. Bloom, bloom, which is the sound of that of Jim and Jason saying, "Hey, where the hell are you?" Uh, I was downstairs, and I said, "What is that noise?" So I ran downstairs, and uh, I was like, "Well, you know, long story short, here I am. I'm here with you guys now. I apologize. Carry on." Nice. So, so we had a, it was a it was a little it was a little less than usual this year. So we started analyzing. I'm like, well, Seth was a little less than usual, but I don't think uh, my group is anyway related to Seth. And then uh, uh, we realized a lot of guys, in fact, almost everyone from Texas wasn't there. So that might have been uh, Houston and a lot of Houston bros show up. So um, yeah. that could have been a Houston related. But one thing is uh, no one makes profile planes and we are the profile brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> so we started floating that around the field and we have guys who have laser cutters and guys that design planes and all that. And I said, look, I fully will uh, get behind. If you decide you want to make a kit or whatever, 
please email me, PM me. It's what we say to people anyway. Let me do stories. Let me uh, take pictures. Let me let people know it's out there. We'll help support what you're doing and get this thing revitalized. So actually, at least two people that were in the field last week have said, I'm going to start kidding this. I'm going to start kidding that. Cool. So, you know, just one year ago, OMP was creating one heck of a nice giant scale um, profile, and they just stopped. So you're right, man. There are no one, there's nobody left really making good ARFs of profiles. Well, somebody said, you know, uh, there hasn't been anyone in years. And I'm like, no, OMP has been doing it for years. But, yeah, they're gone now. So, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a lot of this is stick building. And everyone's like, well, everyone's an ARF builder now, and we're not ARF builders. And uh, then I, you know, it's not even really building. That's the funny thing. You say, I built this ARF. And then the right, purists right, are like, right. blasphemy, you can't say built, you meant to say assemble. I started okay. out stick building. And, well, these and, days, if you build an ARF and you have to put in servos and a motor and all that stuff, that's building. I think it is. <laughs> Jim, you build, built uh, kits in the, in the sticks, as you say? <laughs> well, I'm going to call somebody I know at Horizon. I really don't think uh, anything will come of this. But I, I, we know talented designers, and why couldn't you have, now it goes against the grain of building your own uh, profile, but why couldn't you have a really killer foam uh, pre-built ARF profile that flew great, and, you know, for 250 bucks out of the box, you would have something that you could take to the field and fly. Uh, I just think the market segment's too small. 3D? It's, it's sad. No, profiles in general. I think it's, it's it, I mean, you yeah. guys are hardcore. But the reality is, is that uh, I think Nash Bro is the center of the universe for profiles, right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. This really isn't as huge as uh, your microcosm world of it, and I'm not saying that in a bad way. But no, bring, no, all, pitch yeah. it, pitch it to people that are want to make money off of it, and I think you're gonna. It's it'll never Lose, work. Right. Yeah. It's always been a microcosm too. Uh, we were always aware of that. That's why I think we were successful at what we did. And still successful at what you're doing. So. Yeah, so uh, one thing, we were out there and everyone's like, well, uh, I'm definitely coming back th next year. And uh, so we have some double downs on what we're going to be doing next year with Saturday night and all that good stuff. P.S. We're not 30 anymore. Everybody out there is 50 now. So. <laughs> That's right. Hey, oh, yeah. Look who my son found in the floor and, and was like, oh, my gosh, Dad, how could you let this lay in the floor? It was in the shop. You remember what him? is that? Oh, it's the FPV huh. uh, head guy. He used to sit on my uh, Surfer 1500, and then I put these uh, uh, head plays. I made the head plays out of foam and tape. And, uh, his head foam, got ripped foam off. and tape. That's right. a F and T. <laughs> uh, but his head got ripped off last year in a in a pretty bad crash. So. Uh, that leads us. Y'all want to talk? I, I can talk about what I've learned at Nashboro and what's going to happen. So you can see behind me the Strato Surfer, and I, I'll pull that out in a second. And then I also brought, oh, careful, I brought my uh, Theory Type W. Mm -hmm. so I did that review, and I actually flew the Theory Type W more than usual for a review plane. But I got out there, and uh, Matt Gunn and I had a problem, or Matt helped me with a problem. I couldn't find a CG on the Strato Surfer anywhere. Yeah, Am I, just, I think they just say wing it, but really it's in a small piece of paper that was included with the Stratosurfer and it was never, it's never mentioned in online anywhere, nor is that document available for download. So you're stuck let's put with it. Yeah. yeah. You're stuck with it. So let's there's put it a picture in review. It, isn't it in the review? Oh. Uh, maybe I didn't list it in my review and so that's the problem. The anyway, it's on the, it's on the back edge of the first spar. Is that correct? Um, I gotta tell you, to me, it looked like it was right in front of this servo house. Yeah. If you look, if you look through there, you, if you put it up to the light, if you got, where's your gigantic flashlight, Jim? Yeah. Where's just one of your ELAR it, man. That's all you gotta do. Yeah. <laughs> is it in, yeah. Is it in the back of the, of the it, big carbon touched, fiber? It touches that. It touches the back edge of that okay. uh, front spar, which is well, right where you're pointing. That's where I said it, and I will say I only had to put a couple of clicks of trim. I forget if it was up or down. But one thing that happened was at that level, my battery was super, super forward, and I got to think it's trying to compensate for gear that would be on the nose. 
that's a lot of gear you got up there, buddy. Yeah, no, it's too much. Um, and it made it fly heavy. And so, um, this guy was just on here for weight, not to mention it was checking up my view. Yeah. So what, yeah. So what's going to happen is this is going away and this, there's a secondary deck that comes with this that lives right here. And that secondary deck's going in and this camera's moving out and that's going to solve my CG and my weight issue. And uh, I flew this around a little bit. Actually, I'm pretty sure the battery in here is smoked based on the way I, <clears throat> it flew. So so this happened. The other thing I'm going to do, by the way, is I am going to, I didn't do it because I, I tend to complicate my life before events. I'm going to put <laughs> flaps. Yeah, Jason knows. I'm going to put flaps on this thing. And what I was really wanting to do was come around uh, through the parking lot. Now, this, is a, this isn't like a normal event where I would never fly the parking lot of a normal event, but. It's expected at Nashboro. We're in the middle yeah. of nowhere. It's yeah. expected to weave between vehicles at Nashboro. <laughs> well, above head level. Yeah. Anyway, I was going to, uh, if I had flaps on this, I could have gone flap down and super slow. Just mm -hmm. So that's something I, I dream of doing. And it really kind of uh, invigorated me to, to go back in and make this thing exactly what I want it to be. Yeah, you can put that thing on a diet. It won't take much. And you know, it'll really change, change the way it flies. Mine flies like... Uh, like, uh, I mean, really well. It It's not nearly as heavy. I'm using a 6S5000, and I've got all the accoutrements. Wow. As yeah, I was using say. 2200. Yeah. yeah. So then I got this young lady out. Now, the difference in our field in Nashboro is that there's a hill, and there's trees, and there's – it's a – I guess to me it feels bigger. Jason, I don't know if it is bigger, but it's, more, it's a wide-open shot. And uh, so there's a picture, and we'll show it later because my hands are full. Um, I was given uh, rides in this, so I had goggles and chairs, and literally uh, either I'd just hand the goggles to a stander by who had no idea what was happening, or a kid would walk up, and then somebody would hand the goggles to the kid. I have a great picture of a kid biting his fingernails as I'm flying inverted over the runway. But man, what a dang sweetheart. So I'm, I'm flying this thing just like this. Also, uh, Matt, you gave me a camera. Oh. A Fox Ear Legend One. I have one right here in case uh, you don't have it, Jimbo. This is yeah. one heck of a great FPV camera. Very thin, just an awesome, awesome camera. And I actually have footage from that camera on the Commander, Jason. You know when I put it on the tail? Mm, yeah. <laughs> it looks awesome. Does it? Holy cow! Yes, yes. I have a lot to talk about, by the way. So uh, nice. one thing I was going to mention is the other canopies in the back in the shop, but there's two canopies and the other canopy is made for that Fox ear and it uh, rides right up here on the second lip. And so Very if you nice. want to do HD of what you're doing, which I almost in this thing, I wouldn't want to do, but um, it's made for it. Try on it's anyway, this thing, um, I, I want to increase my roll rate. It, it rolls fast, but I need it to roll faster. So mm -hmm. that would be my only complaint, but I'm flying inverted. I'm flying around the hill. I'm doing, uh, I, and then it goes so fast, which I'm not really used to. Uh, somebody said it's like flying in an F 16. So I would get up high and come down super fast and then bank and yank and pull and like do a roll and go up in a loop and come down inverted over the runway. <laughs> and so by the end of Nashville, I was like really flying the crap out of this thing. And, uh, what's your you flight know, time with it? Uh, uh, I guess I was flying five to six minutes. I was just, I didn't want to smoke any more batteries after the first one. And I thought I'm going to be safe and land it. Nice. How do you smoke yeah. batteries so much, man? You just flying the pants off of it and, and yeah. wait until it, uh, I was until flying. It yes. LVCs. Yes. Is, the answer to that is that's how I smoke all my batteries. <laughs> and I do do that a lot. And it uh, happens to the best of us. I do it a lot. But the, 22, the 2200 was already a little puffy. And I, I don't, I guess I was, yeah. So anyway, it's not a loss. And then in this guy, I'm just flying. Uh, I had a pile of these. Thank goodness that I bought at Joe Nall the year before. These are just uh, batteries. I was flying in a for us. 1300. Yeah. A quadcopter. Mm -hmm. The other thing is I don't have the Manta in here because the Manta never came out because after I got on this thing, I didn't, I should have got the Manta out, but it was so dang hot. I just couldn't see setting another airplane up and sweating. So, I, but the man is on the list. We'll talk about that. In a second. So, the end of the story is I kept saying, why would I need another airplane after I flew this thing? Yeah, she's a sweetheart. Sweetheart. 
Let me make sure I get. Speaking of sweethearts, did you know that I went to school with uh, Gretch's uh, daughter, Barbara huh. Gretch? No way. Yeah, man. She was at my school in Savannah, Georgia. I, be I believe the Gretch sold out, and then uh, uh, Fender picked them up, and I think Gretch is back in it. Work they don't own it anymore, but they're working it. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about this. Head plays, of course, you know, standard issue. I brought these for people that, that wanted to fly that were had normal eyes. But I got a lot of stick time on the focal DVRs. And also, accidentally, I got some more stick time on the focal God, DVRs. All these great goggles you have. Yeah. So, uh, by the way, I don't know if uh, Mr. Fat Shark's listening. I wrote him a letter, the shark. And uh, I was on the phone with Matt, and I, and I kept telling everybody, man, uh, everything I'm running is pure fat shark this weekend. And so we called fat shark, or emailed fat shark and said, maybe that would be a giant sticker that you should put out, pure fat shark. That's it. It's, uh, I, I also like the idea of throwing in an unadulterated in between pure and fat shark. Yeah. So let me say something, man. These are not diversity. Of course, you can always pop the module out if you wanted to and put some other aftermarket diversity module if you want to. But I'll tell you what. Um, I had some diversity goggles in the field, and maybe the antennas weren't my very best antennas since they were secondaries. But this set of goggles never let me down no matter what I was doing. And I was pushing it as far as I could with a 5.8 and uh, going around the back of the hill, going super whatever. And then the other thing I really liked, um, I'm going to plug it in here. You really, probably do get you do get great uh, performance with that. You got that you got that antenna mounted way up there, out of the out of yeah, your way of your skull. Head. It's a, probably a pretty rock solid setup. And you can't see it. All you can see is a light from my mm -hmm. vision. But this L, this screen is awesome. Now this is what the other one has nothing. And so uh, with the screen, it would go through the channels if you didn't know what channel you were on. And it would find the one with the biggest signal and show it to you and ultimately pick that. And uh, I knew what channel I was on because I set everything up before I left the house. But, man, that came in so handy to let me know I was on the right channel. This antenna was awesome. And um, oh, the 16 by 9 option on this, huge selling point for me, A being between uh, the other set and this set. Mm -hmm. And so... I'm a gigantic fan. One charge before I left, I flew these things every day, and I never had to charge this battery again. How many bars? I'm down to two bars on it right now. What does, uh, Jason, do you know what the True D and all the open source um, diversity receivers use? Is it called Open Diversity or something? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't so I'm remember. wondering if, it, if that's being used in that unit right there for auto search. Because it's it's very similar looking to my True D um, unit by Furious FPV and the multitude of other companies that use that open source and I can't remember what it's called Open dis Open Diversity or something I don't know maybe somebody in the comment section will tell us what it's called. Well, I'm a gigantic fan. The other thing I'll say is the second I put these goggles on, it would start fogging up. I mean the second, and of course it's got the built-in fan with the button. Mm -hmm. I'd plug in, hit the button, and never think about it again. And, and it, like, it was sweat-tacular, and these never bothered me. So what this leads us to part two of what's about to happen. I'm going 1.3. Um, I've done all my research. I've, I've, I saw a guy, and I would like to do this myself. He showed 5.8 fly in a canyon and then 1.3 fly in the exact same canyon. And he A, B, the, the, just the video quality, not, yeah. not even the breakup. And the video quality was just so much better, too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's, there's uh, more... Um it's actually sort of the other way around when you think about it. Um, you're supposed to supposed to get better signal quality from 5.8 because it can actually pack in more data in the stream. It's a very shorter wavelength, much shorter. Um, 1.2 is a nice long wavelength. So uh, technically at the expense of, of actual quality of the signal, you should get further, you do get further distance, better pen penetration with 1.2 slash 1.3 than 5.8 but uh it all depends again on the camera you're using you know 600 tvl camera versus 900 tvl camera and then the and then rendering signal quality all that sort of stuff is uh is can can play a big role in it 
But yeah, for distance, for better, for better multipath rejection, uh, 1.3 is the way to go. So what I'm going to do, I called up Fat Shark, or I emailed Fat Shark, did not call them, and I'm going to get their, uh, uh, oh shoot, next what? Next, next wave. I've got it. Next, yep. The next wave unit for this. So I'm going to pull this guy off, and the next wave will go on. And uh, then I'll, they oh, you also know what make, you should do? What? Jim, Jim T. Graham, you're going to save my life or just make things a little nicer. Uh, you need to email him back and ask him to send you two extra covers. Okay. The little plastic cover. You only get go, one. Go on. If you have two, you can you can have one on your 5.8 module and one on your 1.3 module, and then you can literally plug them and play. But as it stands, in order to get that cover, you have to unscrew the antennas, pull that cover off, get it off the bracket, stick it on the new one, and then plug it in. So if you want to switch, I can't find the covers anywhere for sale to buy. I looked. So if we I could have them. Be, why aren't we 3D printing this? Oh, that's an idea too. But I like the I nice form fitting. Like I want the stock cover with this gray, you know, the just this matching uh, right. matte finish feel to it. If I could get an extra one of those, I would be so happy. I have the contact of their new marketing guy, and I, and if you remind me, I'll shoot him an email. I don't think mine have come to me, which is my only frustration. I can order them on Amazon and have them now. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And it's October coming, and so I'm going to give it a little bit of time, and I want Jason or Matt, I want you to tell me that I should go ahead and order a whole separate set for a different airplane. Of yeah. separate set of what? Well, okay, so I'm getting I'm getting this for my goggles, and that'll go on these, and I'm going so to leave So 1.2, and you're going to have, uh, and you're going to be using a singularity antenna, right? Yeah, so I'm getting a true RC antenna. I'm going to start out with the dipo. Because uh, everyone says they will do, so I'm going to start out stock, and then I'm going to do a secondary piece with the true RC antennas. Uh, you're going to use the you're going to use, use the, the stock dipole. Yeah, I wouldn't use that little man, that linear dipole on there. Well, that depends on what the fat shark wants me to do. All right. I ask I asked him, and he said it's fine on those. And so I thought we'd do a second piece with the true RC antennas on there, and uh, give that a shot. And then the other thing is uh, we could be on the internet showing all this right now. Um, in fact, that's probably. So if you're out in the middle of a giant field, right, farm fields for as far as the eye can see, or you're flying offshore from over a lake or something like that, okay. a dipole, a linear dipole would work really great because um, they actually have a little bit better gain than those omnis. However, that's not, they have terrible multipath rejection. So that's why I use an Omni antenna to get the uh, multipathing at the expense of gain. Not much though. So, so if you're if yanking him, go ahead. If I'm flying behind trees, I need that. that well, yeah, I mean, real, I guess real, real world theory always trumps, uh, a real world experience trumps theory. But if you get out there and you're flying, I, I, really think you'll have a much better experience using those Ooh. two singularities. You know what we need, Matt? What? We need one three pagoda antennas. That we do, man. They'd probably be like the size of a pancake. But <laughs> no, well see the pagodas are smaller than the normal uh yeah. Five so eight. maybe a silver dollar size, right? So I would think it'd be smaller than the true RC ones even slightly. Ah, let's talk to Alex. That would be cool. Well, before we go there, let's start here. This is the 1.3 uh, 250 watt unit that they yeah, sell. It's, at it's the linear right off the bat. There's just no need to run them anymore. People don't run those. Those that do, I don't know. The beauty yeah. of the fat, fat Shark units is that they can use now almost any battery, and they have a, a, a plug in here for your camera. So you can plug your camera and power it off this unit as well. So that's awesome. So this is what's going to live on my plane, whatever that is. And then let's go look at the uh, unit for my goggles. That shark, 1.3. And that, where am I going to go? I'll go to ready-made because we're friends of ready-made, big fan. So this is the unit that's going to plug into your goggles. You ever use one of those, Jason? Uh, yeah, I have it. Yep. How does it compare? How does that receiver compare to a standalone as like the immersion RC Uno or something like that? It's or hard the, to say. I haven't, I mean, it's, I haven't compared or tested next to each other, but it works great. Yeah. 
I mean, I haven't any issues with mine yet. That should be a really good setup. Um, one thing I did hear is that uh, some of the the this doesn't pick up audio on non Fat Shark. Oh man, I've never been able to pick up audio on anything Fat Shark headset. Like I no, always, always you didn't let me. Stat. You didn't let me finish, man. Okay. Um, if you have a Fat Shark trans video transmitter, it will uh, send audio to this unit. So oh. it's the internet. Yeah. So that's so all those uh, ready-made RC crickets I have. They just all it is is eh, it's just this really awful sound. It's about a chip that's in there that you would either have to replace or go to Fat Shark. Yeah. And the reason I'm running Fat Shark gear uh, for this last event, I'm holding up my goggles that you can't see, is because uh, I figured, okay, everything here is Fat Shark. Why would I deviate uh, from the recipe? And I had three sets of Fat Sharks in my bin. So now let's go look at the True RC antennas. True RC Canada. Mm -hmm. and these guys are really in Canada, eh? <laughs> oh, I said, hey. Hey. They speak. They speak French. He actually sent me a reply in French once. And I'm oh like, wow! Hey. I said, Hugo, I don't really know what you're saying. I didn't want to like actually translate it and reply back to him in French. So I just said, "What are you talking about, eh?" <laughs> Where's our one point three? Oh, wow, what is that? Wait, wait, wait. Go down just a little bit. Da, 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 da. Ah, that's that. So that's that new. Look at the two point four. Two point four. What is this? Five, Five eight. eight. Oh man, Hugo works fast. Look at all this stuff. So what are you looking for? You're looking for an X square air, right? And I um, singularity? Is that what you want? He's got a 1.3 like section on the left-hand side category. You see that right there? Go to shop and then 1.3. Oh, yeah, that's where I was. Sorry, everyone. Hey, We're uh, going to get on. there. Left side, there's a uh, scroll up. Right there, 1.3 under in product categories and tennis. Left Keep going side. left. There you go. There it is. Bingo, bango. <clears throat> so uh, this is going to sit on my goggles, and this is going to sit on my bird. That's correct. Yep. But and you can embed good. that. That those antennas, they're really great because all of them do. They see straight through the foam. I mean, literally, I've done very exceptional. Uh, distances that shall not be named with those antennas buried deep inside of the aircraft they just see right through the foam so uh, you you know you could technically bury a, a um, an exposed uh, omni but you don't have that case around it so that's perfect you just cut a hole pop it right in i don't know that i'm down for 400 dollars for that gatlin though me neither man Ooh. i mean is That'd that some awesome. miracle drug right there because i can take a linear antenna and use a Yagi for thirty nine ninety five and do the distance the same with that. Man, I that think. is expensive. That's a monster. You know what I think? I think we need to get a can of snuff and put and label it up with true RC and make it look like this antenna. <laughs> so uh, one thing I was going to ask about, uh, I'm already off of it, is going backwards, going backwards. How many channels does this guy have? We're talking about U.S. It, channels. It's probably only 12. Uh, One and two, 12.58 and 12.80. Everyone says 12.58 is the channel. Is that what you fly on, <laughs> They said 400 Canadian is like $2 American. Uh, uh, what was that question? So I found, yeah, I found 12.58 to do a little bit better. Um, with I cleaned uh, the fifth on my channels. So, yeah, no, okay. Well, that's good because if this only has two channels and that and there's three of us, that's going to limit unless you're flying funny channels. I've still got a 3.3 .3 that I've never used. <laughs> All right, everybody. Died. So that's my whole concept. I'm going to – let me jump out of here. Stop. It's going to be a – I think it's going to be a game changer for you, man. You're going to yeah, notice too. a whole lot better signal strength way on any side of your field. Like anywhere you go, you will have probably 100% signal strength at all times. No fuzzies, no cutouts, no blips. That's the way mine is. So what I'm going to do for everyone is I, while we talk about something else, I'm going to go find this video where the guy has a uh, screen to screen one, three versus uh, five, eight. Now I don't want everyone uh, going one, three. I mean, I'm sure fat shark does. Yeah, he said, Please don't. Yeah. <laughs> but, but one other thing I want to say is cool is 
It's These not going to happen. Allow me to, uh, uh, the module pops right off here. You look, you squeeze it and pull it off and make sure you get your pins in straight. That's really all you have to be aware of. So I can go from 5.8 on my DVR setup. Uh, and then if I want to DVR the one three, I can just pop this off and pop that on and bang, that's it. That's beautiful. Now I know this is a stupid question. I can't run a module over here for like a different frequency. Can I? No, Absolutely. No, not for a different frequency, but you can run another. They used to have the old style. LaForge once had the other diversity receiver on that side. Right. And they used to run the cable across it. A lot of people uh, still use them. Oh, I, I found a replacement cover for the fat sharks. You going to print it? I'm thinking birds. I could print it. Yeah. I, so just, I, don't, I don't think that 1.3 will ever go mainstream in, in um, drone racing for yeah. the reason that only two legal channels. Yeah. It steps on 2.4 and you've only got two channels. Now, oh. if every single human being was running a notch filter, then yes, you still only have two channels. So, Unless you're running a notch filter and they allow you to race with other 5.8 guys, I think you're still going to give them control fits when you get like on the far end of the of the field and stuff like that. Um, even I, I think the notch filters help out a lot, but you still could have a problem. They don't even allow it. You can't even run 1.3 in a race. Uh, and by the way, um, uh, 250 sounds like a low milliwatt, but you can get like, uh, and I'm not encouraging this, nor do I do it, but you can get like five miles out. Oh, way more than that, man. On 250. That's, and that yeah. was with the stock antenna. I saw a guy do a test, and I was like, well, if you can do that, I certainly could roam the field of Nashboro. Yeah. Oh, Those yeah. are like optimum R, uh, RF environments with very low noise floors. But, yes, you can. Here's one other thing I'm going to share with you. No one has mentioned this anywhere, like on the 250-watt page or anything. <laughs> no. Why is True. This, if you're going to run it, and this is from uh, Jason and Matt, if you're going to run uh, 2.4, which I am, Spectrum. You didn't order that, did you? Uh, I ordered the right one. I don't know if I ordered this one. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, the wrong, right that's the wrong one for you, by the way. That's a 433 <laughs> notch filter to filter out. Um, but stay, I mean, the, the principle's the same. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is the wrong one, but ReadyMade has the right one, and I and it should be here like today, I think. I, and I'm going to show you the other thing I ordered if I can find it. So this basically, uh, Jason and Matt, goes in line from my video transmitter into this and out to my antenna. Is that how Between it works? Your antenna transmitter. Yeah, yeah, not that one. That goes on the 433 transmitter. But, yes, it goes between a transmitter and a, uh antenna. Is that it? There you go. That's it. Yeah. That's yep. it. So I have one of those coming. And uh, I'm so hot for this, and I don't want to wait for the review unit. I want to go get my own. You only have one? One notch filter? You need one for each channel of your airplane. You have a <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was going, what is he getting at? And then I go, oh, I see a smile on his face. By the way, everyone, yeah. uh, when I first got the podcast going, Jason's like, are you talking? I can't hear you. And I'm like looking at on-off switches. I'm li and he's like, He I'm likes joking. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll take it to the bitter end too, where you're like, son of a, and he's like, ah, I'm just kidding. So what's the filter, uh, that everybody that you bought, Matt, that we discussed? Um, what are you talking about? Uh, the inline filter for noise. Oh, it's called a power filter. Just write in power filter and it'll, sh it'll pop up there. That's one, uh, the first one, but there's, there's a, a, there you go right there. LC yeah. power filter. You have a 1.7 amp. And you have a 0. 0.7 amp, so mm -hmm. that 0. 0.7 is that 0. 0.7 is all you need for your this setup. This is what I I bought. So basically, um, Jason's saying I probably don't need need it, but I'll know immediately if I do. So this would be an inline filter. It has no connectors, and I'm sure they do that because everyone has a jillion different connectors. And then you inline this between your power, and that's yeah, you pigtail. You make a pigtail off of your ESC uh, lead, right where yeah. it, right where your plug in goes for power in my power. case xt60 so right off the xt60 it goes into the sc and then two more come off into that for vn voltage in and then voltage out goes to the uh vtx and you also in your case that you're running well no that that um fat shark has voltage out as well so you only need to do there it is five volts out so if your camera is a five volt camera then that will work. Uh, that will power your camera as well. 
and most all cameras nowadays are yeah. like five volts to 22. So this is my exciting recipe that I'm putting together for 1.3. And I hope I haven't bored anyone. Anything else, guys, before I jump? Yeah, to the plot? make sure you space it all out. Like, don't – everything – just keep it all separated as best as you can. Like, if, if you have wings, put the, put the stuff out on the wings and then make your harnesses go down through the bottom of the wing if you can. Right. Um, or at least get your antenna away. You're going to have a much better experience – if you separate all the stuff, if you throw all of your stuff right on your um, right. on the on the nose of it, it's just too close. I think right. in between oh. your two point four gig um, VT, you know, put your put your transmitter or excuse me, your receiver for your um, spectrum. Put that out as far as you can in the tail. Stuff it oh. down in the fuselage and 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 send those things out there. Just all get right. it away from that transmitter. Well, more on that as I do it, and of course a review will happen after I do it. I have multiple reviews. I got to review these goggles, but I have lots of photos and videos. I got a lot of DVR uh, from the field, which is awesome. The DVR was intuitive. We're totally not looking at my goggles, but the DVR was a button, and while I'm in the thing, I hit it, and you can it'll beep at you and say I'm recording. You beep it again, it'll turn off. So I got a lot of experience with that. And uh, then the commander review has got to be done. I haven't done any of this stuff. I've, I've gathered all the information and photos and videos, but nothing else. So here's something I wanted to show you. Uh, as you may or may not recall, Jason and I went to the airfield and visited Jim Burke as he flew through in his, and here's a picture. And that's his plane. He's wearing a helmet. <laughs> yeah. This is his full-scale uh, competition, 330, that he's flying right now. And then uh, here is the side where you can see RC groups and flying giants and knife edge and real flight and all that stuff. So uh, as this story says, I was on the field at Joe Nall with Chris Henson and he said, Hey man, <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, Hey man, what do you think about us using that trim scheme on our, uh, this airplane I'm building? And I said, hold on. So I walked off and called Jim Burke. He goes, that would be awesome. And that wasn't, I mean, that was shown all. And so here we have a 95 inch all electric 330 and it's supposed to fly really great. And so here it is, it's uh, out. And so Mirko, we've talked about Mirko a lot on the podcast. He's from Italy and he's uh, one of the premier airplane designers. He actually no, designed this. That is sweet. Let me go back. Wow. Look at all that. I carbon called Jim. carbon fiber laminated wood. That is uh, pretty strong. I did say, hey, man, uh, since this is a Merco design, do I need to be talking to people about rights and ownership? And he said, no, I bought the design. So Score. Uh, it's his design to let people use. And uh, I understand that's ultra coat. That's I would want it. Look at him. It says uh, 3303 Delta. That's Jim's number. No. I think I his is three three zero JD. Go down to the bottom. Uh, go go into the comment section. There's a picture. Of, but you uh, know what? I bet I bet they put the three D there for three D. That's what I'm thinking. So if you go down a, to the bottom, I have a message to Chris. Who's at E Week right now? Yeah. Uh, so he, he's out in the pasture, probably with no cell signal. So, um, Mike, one of the questions I have is, does the sticker sheet, and we had discussed this, have all those stickers on it? I wish it did. I wish it should. Did. And he said, I mean, he has it all. He probably did not include it. Oh, you can't. It would be nice it. if it did. And I so, want them all. Super Tim, oh, that would be cool. Super Tim also uh, gets in here and, and talks about it. Uh, I just wanted to roll it onto the runway for picks. I uh, thought he was kidding until he handed me the transmitter. Once the wheels left the ground, it took me all of three seconds before I knew it was a giant scale electric plane. I've been waiting my whole life for Dang. Wow. <laughs> so this is on uh, flying giants. It's also on RC. What Group. size is it? 95 inch man. Score. I am. Now that you've got it up, go down to the bottom, please. I want to see what that tail number is that I posted. It's oh. bothering me. Oh, you can't even see it. Three three zero. It's got to be JD, right? I'll JD. tell you something, guys. So see where this airplane is right now. See that airplane right behind oh, it? Guess who airplane is? It's your girlfriend's airplane. Yeah, that's my woman, Patty Staffs, Patty Wagstaff's airplane. 
just kidding. Jim's happy. I can't, I can't help it if she's sweet on me. <laughs> so what else do we have? Uh, we have an event that I reported on. Got a couple of events going. Got your prop busters. You got your uh, express. So that's happening this weekend. Yes. That it propeller looks like it took a beating. Is that now? How is this happening today? No one has an event October, on Thursday. October. October. Oh, October. There you go. Bum, bum, ah, got it wrong. All right. All right. And then we have the Tri Cities Hook Fest. And uh, E Week, uh, as we just said, is going on. Yes, sir. And then I want to talk about uh, someone who was with me all week last week. This, watch, watch. He's, he's giving away meat at barbecue at uh, Joe Nall. That boy will tong you. tong you with some tongs. Win the election just for uh, the barbecue aspect. So Randy is running for executive vice president right here, as you can see. And uh, we have a full yeah. some info. Now, I know Randy. The reason I'm talking about him, he and I have been friends for 10 years. I've uh, been to many shows with him. So I support Randy. As, uh, oh, Randy. 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 Randy Tola. Oh, they, uh, Nick said it's in 330FZ. You know, he was uh, Foxtrot Z. Zulu. He actually Fox called Trot Z. <laughs> Zulu. <laughs> <laughs> when, when he got that number, he said, okay, here's my number choices. And they were all like that. And I'm like, yeah. uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Fox which, Trot one Zebra. You, which one you should get? <laughs> Ooh, who put that up? Uh, Jim T. Graham. What flight controller is that? Oh, you want to see it? What is this, this is, sorcery? It's the longest story I've written in weeks. Detrum Sinton? The, I thought it was a Sintra. No, but it's the Sintan. Sintan. The Nissan Sintra. Centaur. Well, it's a good thing. Dentrum Centaur. High performance <laughs> CPU, barometer, six axis gyro, uh, advanced algorithm, accurate Coffee control, maker. PMU module. And here's some pictures. What does this thing do? Are you picking yeah. one of these up? No, I'm not. Okay. Uh, is there room? Is there room in our industry for another flight controller for multi rotors? Just, just wondering, guys. Well, it doesn't do wingcraft. Did I? Did you just make that clear to me? Yeah. Well. No. Uh, I'm out of that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I don't fly. I, I, I just can't see this doing well. I brought. Well, they'll go south on them here. They just brought it out. Okay. I guess. Okay. Let me take that back just slightly. Uh, okay. Well, what I'm saying is I'm not a multi rotor. I, I, I took a multi rotor to Nashville and only flew my wings. Yeah. I guess the need. Okay, I'll, I'll backtrack a little. I guess the need for a flight controller without all of the geo fencing, although it's not good to have that uh, from a user standpoint, from a government, from a keep drones out of the news standpoint. Uh, that's what some people want is one that doesn't geofence, and I bet you that'll be one of them. AC Glenn, Jason, do you remember when he was just fifteen and skinny? I do. Yeah, oh, I worked God. with AC a little bit at Hobby Lobby too back in the day. Uh, looks like a grown man. Fifteen yep. and life just started. We're growing up. Fifteen and life to go. He's now age twenty-eight. Jeez, Louise, you guys are old. That makes me thirty-eight, unfortunately. Well, he and I are the same age, so that's good. <laughs> in my mind all right hey i'm gonna throw it to you guys i'm gonna stop forcing people to look at the internet while they're on the so they internet. do that enough don't they yeah hey you Working know what about you know what about facebook you know what it's done to me you check if it every 10 seconds if there's somebody uh talking about a thing that they're they think about i don't want to hear it i i like scroll past that as fast as possible i've heard enough people telling me what they think Oh, that's the worst. It is just liquid, liquid audio. <laughs> it's audio diarrhea coming out of their mouths. How about you that? You know, this guy, this guy come across your feet. He wears a cowboy hat and he's always leaned up in his truck like this, looking handsome. And he's like, you know what I think about America? And I'm like, oh my God, I just can't hear it anymore. Hey, we went political. I didn't I mean I, to do that. I think I uh, deleted that guy. I banned that guy. <laughs> I just can't do it anymore. Like, it'll, or the video will show up. You'll never believe this roller coaster goes off the track and scales five buildings. I'm like, I don't want to see that. I know. It's like I've seen it all. 
or somehow the political posting that they took a meme that meant totally something else and they made it political. And it's just like, congratulations for trying, but I don't care. Uh, meanwhile, I just want to fly my RCs and talk about them and research them and build the latest and greatest. Just and have fun, man. Yeah, have man. some fun. Just have fun, man. All the fun. Meanwhile, we're on the internet telling people what we think. Speaking of having fun, so... Yes. If you could see, that's what's happening in my closet. Are you monitoring your <laughs> <laughs> in the crazy. closet? Yeah. So I've got a oh, closet. Jason, 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 you've taken it too far. You can scroll down and see the other one down there that's printing. Oh too. my god, he's hit a level <laughs> of nerd. All right, but get this. So see this Why printer is it right lit here. Up in there? That printer, uh, you know, three hundred and sixty bucks roughly. Um, see this power supply right here? So like your children, yeah. Uh, that's a three hundred dollar power supply, and it's currently connected to the three hundred and sixty dollar printer. And I'll tell you why. So I was printing. I've been printing this thing nonstop since I got it. And uh, the day my review came out the other day, um, yes, yesterday, Wednesday. No, it was like Monday or something. Monday or Tuesday. Uh, I walk in on a print and it's completely stopped. The lights are off on the screen. Everything's dead. So I'm like, it's like, it's like catching your kid mm, in the bedroom. Door closed. Like that's interesting. What's going on? You just ruined like a 12 hour print. Um, oh. I the flip the switch. Nothing happens. I'm like, okay. So I pull it out, put it on my workbench and I like open up the bottom. I'm like power supply or Toast. bad switch or something. So I start getting inside and this is one thing where like the RC hobby and all the electronic skills that you pick up in soldering over the years, like yes. really comes in handy on practical things like this. I'm like, I've got a multimeter. I can start testing things. Oh, yeah. Multimeter for the win. So I'm looking through. I pull the switch out, and then I see that it has a fuse associated with it. It's got a 250-volt fuse. So I pull that out. Yep, sure enough, that thing's popped. I'm like, okay, cool. It's just a fuse. I don't have any of those. So I ordered them on Amazon. They were here the next day. Put the fuse in, plug it all back up, hit the switch, pop that fuse too. It's like, okay, there's something else going on besides the fuse. The fuse is just saving everything from burning up. So I pull the complete power supply off, and then I hook a and I bypass the switch. So I have another like random cable, and I screwed everything into the ports, plugged it into the wall. As soon as I touched it to the wall, <laughs> big like sparks and crap. So I unplug it real quick. So the power supply is just toast. Something's Jeez. bad, majorly wrong with the power supply. Majorly. So I found it on Amazon. It's twenty bucks. I'm like, I'm just gonna order it. Um, it'll be here like tomorrow. Is it that power supply with like the cheese grater top on it and the cover yeah, for it's the, one of those, but it's got specific, it's, a, it's gotta be a 25 amp and it's got specific bolting patterns that fit inside. So I actually found a OEM replacement for it. Uh, it was only 20 bucks. I'm like, that's awesome. But I was like, in the meantime, I want to print some stuff. And so I was like, you know what? I've got a $300 power supply. Uh, no shame charger, in the game, it's man. like total overkill. But okay. I was able to get connectors and, and make it all made up and work as a temporary fix so I can be printing right now. What are you um, printing? Uh, I am printing a Flower Umbridge, Umbridge uh, Harry Potter wand for my friends for, <laughs> for Halloween. And this is running 24 hours a day. What, do you, what are the, what are the oh. important things you're printing? Oh, just Harry Potter. Harry you know, Potter wands yeah. and things. Some, some Spock ears for another buddy. Yeah. So it's been great. And then I've actually, I put it in the chat, but I've actually pre-ordered. I'm just so addicted now. You guys, I, I blame Matt, but yeah. um, I ordered the new Prusa um, I, I3 Mark III. They just released last week or early this week. Um, so I'm going to have that come in in November when it's released. So super pumped about that. Can I Lots show you the latest fun. thing that I just printed? Yeah. All right. So stop here we go. Here. So this is my personal uh, short course truck that I'm finishing up on. Ah, this cool. is yeah, this is a serpent spider um, short course truck. I'm getting back into racing after a few years of being off of it. So I finally built this. I've had this thing for a few years. Finally finished building it. It's ready to rock and roll. But I'm using the uh, the uh, Hobby King orange receiver for nice. Futaba, and I needed a way to since it has double outputs. Uh, I printed that little. 3D mount there, you see it? 
Yeah. Right here. Yeah. So I just made that. I made that quick in Tinkercad. Ooh. And just uh, taped it to there with some double sided tape. It has holes in it and it routes it right out. So there you go. There's my my print. You inspired me to pick back up the 3D printer. <laughs> and so this will be a nice truck, man. I'm ready to start racing again. That's awesome. Speaking of trucks, I was thinking uh, I might get back into my rock crawling FPV if I had a 1.3 because then I could rock crawl through brush. Yeah, well, you could head out. No, no, no. That's a problem. So I did that with the uh, Rock Ray. And yeah. it's awesome. And 1.3 works great. Ah, but I ran into, I need to put a drag, uh, a dragon link. Yeah. Uh, even with that notch filter, it still doesn't do well with 2.4. Does it? No. Well, yeah, that does that. It's a problem with that, even with the filter, but it's just, you just run out of range on 2.4 when you're, you know, Down low. yeah, you're normally you're driving where you can see it, which isn't a huge distance, but when you start FPV in it, you just want to go explore and then you just get out of range really fast. Mm -hmm. I found my video that I was talking about. So uh, the left is one point, uh, actually, yeah, three, and the other is uh, 350 milliwatt. So it's 200 milliwatt, 1.3, 350 milliwatt, 5.8. Ah, cool. Lying the exact same location, and this shows you. And that's this is when I went. Oh, I guess I'm going to get that unit. So it's like 1963. Uh, versus uh 1984 i think that a little bit has to do with the camera that quality is just horrendous but yet the quality should actually be better on the left on the right than on the left yeah like it, it should cut out yeah but apparently that's a terrible camera <laughs> he's using on the right however your point your point of this is that, that man yeah he's ripping man i wish it, i had this sort of terrain i swear yeah, to no. god there's nothing like this in my life that I can go do unless like I Chris travel get the and launch out of his backyard and then head over to a mountain range. That like, makes me so mad. <laughs> like, I want to launch out of my backyard and head to a mountain range. Yep. Five, six, seven miles away. I don't care. Screw it. Hey, it's this what is I want to do in life. This is off topic, but you know, Halloween's coming. Sure. Is. So I have been looking at Halloween costumes and I wanted to get everyone's input on this possible Halloween costume. It's an inflatable horse. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, it's hilarious. It makes me look like I'm riding a horse. There's also a Bronco. What do you think, Matt Gunn? I think it's pretty legit. <laughs> it's only 29 bucks. That's awesome. Hopefully, it'll stay inflated because all it takes is one little pin prick and you are deflated well, it's got a horse built -in fan. fan. They've got built-in fans and battery packs. Um, Gavin, Gavin at the uh, Bruce had a little Bo Peep version and then uh, – Noah Myers had a dinosaur, like Tyr Tyrannosaurus Rex one. They have little fans on the back. And then the best part is, is one of the guys came over while Noah was standing there in his T-Rex costume. <laughs> Turned off his fan. Bent, bent over and just ripped one right into the fan. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, no. <laughs> Who oh, does man. that? Oh, oh, man. Amazing. That's fightable. I couldn't get out of that thing fast enough. It was so funny. Oh. Uh. I should That's add this no to the friend. title, uh, FPV and gas. <laughs> oh, man. That's called a Dutch oven, dude. <laughs> FPV and Dutch ovens. That's it. That so, literally Matt, is a Dutch oven. Have you flown it all this week? Uh, I have flown nothing this week at all. Oh, is, that, is that how it is at the Mac Gun house? I haven't done anything uh, flying related. I wanted to go out and fly a glider the other day. The weather was really nice, and all of a sudden it's cooler and windy now. So. Well, that's what I'm afraid. I'm afraid my 1.3 stuff won't be here before it actually gets cold. Uh, you can do it. Go fly. Cold is relative. Like, you're looking at probably, what, the 60s? That's perfect flying weather, man. Well, we can fly all the way to November, right, Jason? It, it comes and goes. Oh, yeah. Even into December, we get some nice warm days still, usually. Especially with global warming and all that, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, I believe we filled up about an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lucky you're not my neighbor. You'd have to deal with this on a constant basis. I think we'd be all right. All right. So next week, maybe I'll have at least one review done, hopefully more than one. I saw, Mac Gunn, that we have some reviews laying around uh, waiting to be approved that mm -hmm. we can talk about coming. What What's in your approval stack? 
Uh, let's head over there and see. Mac yes. Gunn's approval stack. That's right, yeah. everyone. Mac Gunn and his approval stack. <laughs> I'm trying to get into the approval stack to take a look here. We that means the, the review's the done, the video's done. Yeah, I have my Blade Torrent, which is done. That's the only one in the stack, isn't it? I guess so. I thought I saw one more in there, but I wasn't paying that. I was creating a new article and wasn't paying attention. Oh, yeah, I think you may have seen my um, my um, Inductrix FPV Pro review that yeah. I'm working on. Yeah. And then Has Jason done- is working on his T28 review. See? Yeah. We got to, well, we talked about that last week. How did that uh, podcast t- turn out? I literally gave up the super one out. I, I, I'm I actually glad around. you gave up because it was, uh, we couldn't do anything. You were yeah, just struggling. Yeah, we did well. We just talked for a little while and wrapped it up. We we had a full 30 minutes in. So. All right. Did my Randy Cameron interview come through? I don't know. Did no, Jason? I don't think so. No. All right. Well, we want to thank everybody who watches the live broadcast and uh, everyone who watches it when it's not live. And uh, if you have anything you want us to talk about or, uh, uh, you know, the three of us could uh, throw back and forth, please shoot us a PM on rcgroups.com or Flying Giants, wherever your home may be, and say, hey, you know, it'd be cool. Maybe you could talk about this. And then uh, I'm sure we have either theories, thoughts, or experience, and that would be awesome. Or like just uh, thoughts, random thoughts. I think that would be cool. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So, uh, or you know, if there's an airplane or something like that, any kind of thing you might be, uh, you might uh, want to have spoken of here, please let us know, and we'll do our the best we can. We'll be back next Thursday. I don't know why we wouldn't. And uh, until then, I'll just be playing the guitar. I won't be here. I'll be out of town. So. Oh, Matt Gunn's going to a faraway land. Yeah, we'll talk about it when I return. Nice. Yeah. I'll play hey, us out, and then y'all can say. <laughs> I got an email like that this morning. Really? So uh, maybe y'all could say "simmer down now." And- simmer down now. You got any shirts? That guy wasn't there, by the way. The, he wasn't the shirt, shirt guy. guy wasn't there. Uh, no. Well, he won't be at all next year, and he will ask me if I have any shirts. By the way, guys, Nick sent me that video from uh, Gab Seven O Seven. Mm-hmm. Of him doing mountain flying with his quad, Gabby? it's yeah. amazing. He got on, um, he got on Gizmodo and a couple of other really high level things that said, "Watch this guy with a quadcopter flying through the Alps," and it's just amazing. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Very cool. His name is Gab. It's not Gob. That was Gabby, Gabrielle, isn't it? Meow. No, it's not Gabrielle, is it? You're talking about meow mode on the new. Oh, by the way, I have a meow mode update. Um, the meow mode isn't because a cat lands on its feet. It's because when in real life you hit that switch, that drone sounds makes that sound electronically by accident. It goes, meow. Really? really? Yeah, that's what Kim said. Oh, that's hilarious. No way. That can't be. I thought it was feet landing. No, no. She said that, it, that they said it sounds just like a meow, and she laughed out loud when I told her what we thought. So, by the way, did, what we did thought you know actually that- makes more sense, though, because... But there's other versions. There's other companies that have already had that out, and they call it turtle mode because the turtle all, turtles get stuck on his back. Can't self right. Yep. And by the way, I I'm saw it happen when I was flying with my friend Lonnie King when we were shooting the torrent review. He flipped over his uh, his one one eighty quad or something like that. Just had it upside down, and he hit he hit turtle mode, and it flipped back over just like meow mode. So that's pretty cool. Can huh? meow be the new thing we yell at Joe Nall next year? Oh, that would be oh the stupidest. God. I mean, not that all of our things aren't stupid, but oh, that'd be the stupidest. It is Ga- it, it is Gabriel, isn't it? Gabriel, uh, how do you say his last name? K O C H E R. No idea. Yeah, that's it. So he's got his stuff published. That flight is everywhere. Yeah, that's awesome. Very cool stuff. Good for him. Meow mode. Meow. <sighs> Got any of them? All right. I just want to. I just want to make this my uh, avatar for a while on on all the sites. Like that's good. Oh, uh, you have to look at that because once you 
see it as a human being sit, standing in it, it's hard to unsee it as a little man <laughs> sitting on the. You know what I'm saying? Like you really have to try. It's like one of those uh, one of those 1990s posters where you look at it and cross your eyes and the unicorn or the dolphins come through. You know what I'm talking about? That right. is difficult to see. Well, generally we go somewhere and stand around or I have to walk through neighborhoods. So I, I can walk through a neighborhood in this. Look at that guy's face. He's like, whoa. That whoa, is pretty, yeah. pretty epic for costume. Pretty cool. That guy, that guy does not look normal. No, you got to get the other one. There's another one with a, oh, a unicorn version. Okay, I'm not riding a unicorn, but get the yeah, unicorn this one. one. That one. Yes. He looks pretty serious in this one too. This guy's taking this job. So, well, look, I can yeah, make whoa, it. Whoa, it's the same guy. This has got to be some marketing kid. It's like, <laughs> what the hell am I doing with my life? And this is the bull. Okay, uh, if you're here for RC, it's oh, over. it's bucking. Oh, that's you. Whoa. That's so Jim. That's that's so you Texas that? right there. What I is like that guy bell. holding? Hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's holding a rope. It looks exist. like he's holding one of those yellow uh, rain caps over something. Oh okay. my God. Now, I also considered a costume like this. The monkey on the back. That's funny. Oh my right, But God. the bull, the bull is better, right? The bull's pretty cool. Did you see the one where it's got like a, it looks like a, the, yeah, the kid being like taken away by some flying like ghost thing. This you, we don't want to go. We don't want to get political. But have you seen the political figure holding the other person? <laughs> no. Oh, it's really good. Ooh, yeah. You know what? I went political on this podcast. Immediately knew I'd broken the law. Yeah, we can't. Uh, I saw a thing. It's not here. It's a giant man holding you, and it's the creepy right there. Thing. Go up. Right. Go up slowly. Right there in the middle. Inflatable wrestler carrying the man. <laughs> right <laughs> next to it. Right no. there. It's even creepier. Click so on that anyway for the hell of it. I got to see that. Oh, God. Look at this guy. What is he from the inside? Nice little hair, little brother. Hold on. I'm going to find it because it's so creepy. Okay, you're officially in the bonus segment of the podcast. <laughs> um, yeah, we shed a few viewers, but it's all good. No, it's over. The, the RC stuff's over. I may not find this creepy, creepy man. Um. Anyway, it looks like a look at that. Holy cow! Woo, huh? um, it looks like a giant nude man, except he's like eight feet tall, and then it looks like he's carrying you, but it's not right. Yeah, don't Google eight foot tall naked man <laughs> carrying you. <laughs> Make sure it says costume first. Oh gosh, they have centaurs. <laughs> <laughs> look at they got that guy's head fuzzed out. Oh my yeah, god! Why don't you want to be a part man. of this head fuzz out man? He's too young. That's awesome, man. I gotta find it. Uh, there's no. I think we're out of it here. And I, I, I don't want to spend time hunting it down. Nature it's frightening. Boy. I'll, sh I'll share it with the guys, and if it's worthwhile, we'll do it again in Halloween. We'll <laughs> and then, uh, and then we'll, before Halloween, maybe we could wear our costumes on uh, the podcast. Buyer maybe beware! Oh. If purchased to loco only, if other sellers, quality is not insured. Possible quality poor quality inferiors <laughs> where the heck does it say that some english in there please tighten outer ring to hold fan in place costume okay inflate i'm gonna go to the, the carry costume and then maybe that'll generate the scary man costume there it is oh there it is i found it oh my gosh is oh, that wrong what show the back of it what? Is it rendered? Is it rendered butt cheeks or what? Oh okay. no! There's what? a DIC. What? Oh shoot! We just went out. <laughs> Whoa! I didn't. I didn't look at that. Oh, his legs! No. Why is that it deflated? Right. Why is it deflated? Oh, oh right. man! I'm going away, sir. Hey, that's on Amazon. It must be. Holy cow! That's. I knew it was creepy. I didn't realize it was that creepy. Oh, Aren't you glad God. you did not order that? Well, I'm glad the podcast is on. Oh, oh my god! Uh, we are broad so we are broadcasting, and we are broadcasting a hundred percent. Me, I Joe wasn't. wrote easy. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! Oh my. Easy. Okay, let's take it off of Jim for a second, <laughs> so it's not presenting. I who knows what, know. what, what? Who knows what he's going to put on there now? Oh my Man. gosh! 
<laughs> well, I would not have down, that down. Down. I only saw the general photo and, and I said, that's not right. I never clicked on it. I just commented to myself, that's wrong. That's and I was right. right. Guy had Rastafarian look- hair down there. Ooh, that was smokes. epic. That's that was epic. So go it. ahead and do it. I tell you what, how much was it? Because let's go ahead and order it for you. Get it. No, I'm not going to wear it. But I'm going to go back. I'm going to go forward. Why not go forward? Wow. It it's called nice. Adult Morph Costume, and the cost is $59.95. Pay $59 for a giant naked man. Oh, my gosh. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm I'm taking a back. Podcast. Yeah. And you lift his legs up. The guy's like, oh, look at this, guys. Ah. <laughs> like the guy he's carrying is doing, taking part in this guy's nudity. That's great. I'm carrying around a small man oh, where I have him lift his legs. My junk shows. I don't know if I'm sunburnt from Nashville or if I'm actually blushing. I, I think you're blushing a little. Yeah, All it's right. pretty good stuff. Hey, everyone. That's the RC Group's podcast. We hope you've enjoyed it this week. I'm Jim T. Graham, your host. Hey, um, does anyone know, uh, you know, Mr. Crash Hancock is, uh, we're bringing it down a little bit. Uh, Crash has been sick for a long time, but they're doing their final podcast so if it is tonight, which it very well may be, mm. please be sure to jump on the internet and f- try to find the crash cast. And I believe the website is the crash And, uh, I could look right now as a matter of fact, but I'm not going to, um, but Matt is, I can tell by the look on his face. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Are you mm-hmm. actually doing that? No, okay, no, so- I was just looking on RC groups real quick for something. Oh. Well, uh, the last, it, even if you don't hear it while it's live, go check it out. They're doing the last, last cast lane, and I bet the whole crew is going to be there. And I certainly, Crashcast. over 300, yeah. the 360 uh, podcasts, and this will be the final one as Crash is winding down. I talked to him last night on the internet, and, uh, you know, life, you never know how long or far you're going to get, so you might as well do it today. That's right. Yep. Um, and Enjoy it. I, I saw Lane last night live. This is how I found out about it on uh, Facebook. And he was sitting there talking to Crash. And Crash is definitely uh, uh, riding the wave. And um, and they were making jokes about it and all that, which is really all you can do. So if you're a big fan of Crash, be sure to check that out. And we'll send all our love and our thoughts. And I told Crash we were thinking about him. And uh, all of that to Crash, who uh, helped this hobby in a big way. So also thank all of you who helped this hobby in a big way and hang out with us and get to join us on the podcast and see us at shows and all the good stuff that we do. And everyone that was at Nashville, if you happen to be listening, it was great to hang out with you. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Matt. Yep, yep. Peace all out. Right. Simmer down now. Simmer down now. That's right. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Meow mix. Meow mode. Meow mode. You know, meow, 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 meow. riding around a golf cart going, what's up, y'all? Can I get a meow? Guys are like, meow. We could, I bet they make a, a car horn that meows. I bet we could order that from J.C. Whitney. Meow. They still have J.C. Whitney's? Yes, Shut they do. Out. And by the way, if if there's a cat uh, horn, I'm buying it for a general. The only thing I get from J.C. Whitney are fenders. Fenders, man. And I'm not talking about the ones you play. <laughs> and I'm clicking the button.